Welcome everyone to this exclusive look at the F1 One Begins 2022 launch with F1 in Schools founder Andrew Denford and Formula One's Chief Technical Officer Pat Simmons. F1 in Schools mission is to change the perception of the STEM subjects, which for those who don't know are science, technology, engineering and maths by creating an exciting and engaging learning environment for students from 9 to 19 years old. Through the high-profile, glamorous and high-tech world of F1, the programme creates a hands-on learning experience, promoting a whole range of career opportunities, not only in STEM, but also project management, marketing and communications. F1 in Schools is a STEM-based educational project, offering students a unique competition, capturing their imagination and providing an opportunity to bring to life their classroom learning, as well as giving them invaluable practical life skills. Welcome now to Andrew Denford. So what exactly is the F1 in Schools competition? Well, F1 in Schools is basically Formula One in miniature. We brought the whole world of Formula One into the classroom, so they have to form a team of six students, girls and boys, as a mix, with a team principal, aerodynamics, marketing manager, resource manager, marketing sponsorship manager. They all come involved in the competition without, throughout the whole of the classroom and then develop a Formula One car to, that's going to race down a 20 metre track. Well, who competes in this competition then? Well, basically, it's, it's the most inclusive and diverse uh, STEM programme around the world. We've got students from all over the world involved from the age of 9 to 19. And they've got four levels of entry. So they've got the primary class, entry development professional class, which is what we run at our world finals. And then what is the competition all about? Well, it's about producing the fastest car, but it's all about the teamwork. It's all about learning verbal presentation skills, producing portfolios and going through all the judging elements at regional finals that are judged by professionals from all over the world to get the team that not only has got the fastest car, but the best team ethic. And I can see you're holding a wonderful car in your hands there. This is our world champions, uh, Britannia Red from Robert May School in Odium, Hampshire. Uh, and they competed in our 16th world finals held a month ago here in the UK. It was a virtual event, fabulous event with 43 teams from 38 nations taking part. And they went through all the same disciplines they would have gone through had they been to a, a physical event. So they were still doing verbal presentations, their pit displays were done graphically, all judged online, and then they still did the engineering judging. And the incredible thing that we managed to uh, replicate was actually the reaction time racing. And so all the cars were raced eight times down our 20 metre track. And so what does a team have to do to become champions? Well, first of all, it's working as a team, making sure that they do everything that a Formula One team would do. So they've all got their own job roles, led by their team principal. And, and then, of course, speed is important, but it's making sure they get pretty much at the top levels of all the different categories of entry. So the, so the verbals, the pit displays, and also these wonderful portfolios for enterprise and engineering. Fantastic. Thank you so much for your insight. But stick around because we're going to be catching up a little later on. We've all seen the 2022 car now and wow, the radical innovations on this car are super cool. It looks stunning. And to help inspire us all even more, please welcome via screen link from Silverstone's paddock, F1 Chief Technical Officer Pat Simmons. Pat, it's great to have you with us. So tell me, how did you get into motorsports in the beginning? Well, I've always loved cars and engineering. I, I was taking things apart and rebuilding them, trying to understand how they work from a really early age. And I decided when I was 12 that I wanted to design cars. As my father loved motor racing and I'm a very competitive person. There was only one way I wanted my career to go. I was lucky enough, through hard work, to get involved in the top level of motorsport, Formula One. And of course, you've been instrumental in designing the 2022 car. Tell us a little bit about the design process. Well, you know, it's not often that you truly get to start a design with a blank sheet of paper, or more correctly, a blank screen these days. It's challenging, and yet it's immensely exciting. We didn't even have to keep the size of the wheels the same. So, like any design process, we started with objectives. In this case, to understand why it was so difficult to drive close behind another car, and also to try and simplify and clean up the cars. We also made steps to improve safety, because that's always one of our objectives. We built up processes to really understand the aerodynamics of the cars, not just the effect of the airflow on the car itself, but also the effect on the following car. And this required us to develop some very complex simulation methods, much more complex than the teams themselves used. And we also set out ambitious targets for the tyres. And this is one of the reasons we went from 13-inch wheels to 18-inch wheels. 
We knew that we were creating a moment in F1 history and the platforms of the future. And really, what can be more exciting than that? You mentioned aerodynamics and cars following one another. Tell us a little bit more about aerodynamics and how that affects us watching at home. You know, next time you're in a car on a cold day, look at the water vapor that's coming out of the exhaust to the car in front of you. It seems to move randomly as if it had a mind of its own, but it's not random. It's following some very complex physics, and we have to understand that physics and tame it. And without the incredibly efficient aerodynamics of the Formula One cars, they wouldn't be able to go as fast as they do. But perhaps more importantly, without a good understanding of aerodynamics, Wind farms would be less efficient at producing electricity. Road cars would use more fuel and produce more CO2 as a consequence. You mentioned the increase in size from 13 to 18 inch wheel rims. Why have you changed the size? Well, we decided to increase the size of the wheels for many reasons. They do now look more like the low profile tyres found on modern high performance cars, but that wasn't actually the reason for the change. There were really two reasons. The first was to make the tyres more rigid and therefore to improve those all important aerodynamics. But just as importantly, we needed a fresh approach to managing the temperature of the tyres, which is something the drivers find very difficult and is currently affecting how closely they can race. The larger diameter has allowed us to work on a totally new generation of tyre design. So where does the future of F1 take us in terms of car development, Pat? Our current hybrid engines are the most efficient on the planet. They convert more of the energy in the fuel to useful work than any other engine. But now, working hand in hand with our partners at the Ramco, we're developing fully sustainable fuels which have no fossil content, and this eliminates the generation of fresh CO2 from the engines. Our fuels for the future will come from sustainable sources, taking the CO2 that's already been generated, capturing it and effectively recycling it. The fuel will be made from second generation bio components, which are components which are manufactured from various types of non-fossil sources, including biomass, algae, agricultural residues, or even waste. And the advancements that we make on the racetrack, both with our engines and our fuel technologies, have a genuine chance of aiding the global need to cut emissions, as well as fulfilling our own target of making Formula One carbon neutral by 2030. Pat, I'd love to talk to you about F1 in schools now and what advice you could give to the entrance of the 2022 F1 in schools competition. Well, F1 in schools just provides a unique opportunity. It's not just about the application of physics and mathematics into an engineering design. It's about turning the virtual into the actual. It's about working as part of a team. It's about handling frustration in a positive manner. It's about attention to detail. It's about adhering to schedules. But above all, it's about competition, that emotive state that has driven the careers of so many of us. F1 in schools will teach you many things, but if I were forced to narrow it down, I would say that developing your ability to research a problem, understand it, and implement your understanding will be fundamental to your career development. In addition, new ideas and lateral thinking rarely occur from sitting in a darkened room by yourself. Embrace the thinking of your team and the new paths of reasoning that it may lead you down. And finally, but perhaps most importantly, enjoy the experience. Irrespective of whether your future lies in motorsport, I hope F1 in schools will enable you to become members of a very select group, the best job in the world, engineers. Fantastic advice there. And Pat, the exciting thing about F1 in schools is that the skills can be applied not just to motorsport, but into the wider world as well. Is that something you'd agree with? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, I am passionate about Formula One, of course, but I'm also passionate about engineering. I get a real buzz from being creative and solving problems, and this buzz doesn't just come from racing cars. A great example of this is that last year I co-led a team of engineers from various Formula One teams, and we created a medical ventilator in just 23 days. Now that's a process that normally takes over two years. I always say that scientists are the first to point out problems, but it's engineers are the ones that have to solve them. Absolutely. Project Pit Lane was wonderful. I guess what you're saying, Pat, is that in other words, F1 isn't just about racing. It's also about using the sport as a vehicle for change and improvement, not just in transport, but as you mentioned, healthcare. So is that the message that you'd like to send to the F1 in schools entrance? Yes, precisely. We know that Formula One is fast paced and it's adrenaline filled, but it also boasts some of the finest minds and technologies on the planet. And more and more, we're applying that to also provide answers to real-world sustainability and environmental problems. 
Pat, as always, it's been great to catch up and to get your insight, and I hope that we can catch up in person very soon. We're joined again by Andrew Denford. And Andrew, we've just launched the 2022 F1 car, and F1 in schools is also launching their 2022 regulations and season. So tell us more about that. Well, just like Formula One evolves, F1 in schools evolves also. We have to look at the rules and regulations every year. So this year, we're taking a leaf out of Formula One's book and, and taking a couple of regulations that mimic the Formula One 2022 car. So we're going for slightly larger diameter wheels, which sounds simple, but it will affect aerodynamics all the way down the car. And we're also in, including in, in the, the testing of the car will be torsion testing to make sure the front and rear wings can stand up to the rigours of racing. How fantastic. And so if people are watching at home and thinking, how can I get involved? What's the best way to? Well, it's quite simple. Go to f1inschools.com, follow us at f one schools uh, HQ, uh, but also contact their in-country coordinators. Fantastic. Andrew, as always, thank you so much. My thanks as well to Pat Simmons, Formula One's Chief Technical Officer, as well as Aramco for support of the programme. And good luck to all of you entering the competition.